Hello, this is Achilles Drill when nailing success gets simplified. And here is our second video of the series Common Neuroanatomy Steeple Chase Questions. In this particular series, we will emphasize on some common questions that can be thrown at you from the sagittal session to the brain. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful session, and you do have to work with me to the end. All right, let's get straight to work. Okay, now. From this picture, you are seeing the sagittal section through the brain, uh, specifically the mid sagittal section. You can see a lot of structures have been pinned right here. I right here is showing that a circles have been pinned right there, and then H is directing at a gyrus right there. Okay, so I will show you a textbook picture where we'll demystify some common sulci and gyri that can be pinned along the sagittal view of the brain. Okay, starting with this very beautiful picture, from our earlier video, you do agree with me that here is the central sulcus, which we know is to separate the frontal lobe of the brain from the parietal lobe of the brain. Okay, the sulcus is very important. Apart from it separating the lobes of the brain, it is also a very important landmark for separating these two important gyri. That is the precentral gyrus anterior and also the postcentral gyrus posterior. Okay, so let me walk you through this. We have the central sulcus right here. Anterior to it is the precentral gyrus. Okay, and then posterior to it is the postcentral gyrus. All right, and the postcentral gyrus is also known as the, um, the primary sensory area, precentral gyrus, the primary motor area. So those structures too can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them the sulcus as well as the gyra. We also have the parietal occipital sulcus right here, which is known to separate the parietal lobe of the brain from the occipital lobe of the brain. And apart from that, there is still this important sulcus in the posterior part of the brain. That sulcus is called the calcarine sulcus. It's not too defined here, but I do have a better picture of it here. Can you take a look at this sulcus? This is the calcarine sulcus, and of course, here is the parietal occipital sulcus we mentioned earlier. So, any of these um, sulcus can be pinned and you be asked to identify them. Parietal hospital sulcus, what does it do? It separates parietal lobe from the entire hospital lobe. Now, calcarine sulcus, calcarine sulcus, which is red here, it actually divides this hospital lobe into a superior part and an inferior part. Now, apart from this, there are still other important sulci around the, the sagittal view of the brain. But before that, let me draw your attention to this landmark, this structure which I often regard as my landmark around this sagittal view. And that is the corpus callosum. Okay? The corpus callosum is actually the largest commissural fiber of the brain. Um, you do know what commissural fibers are. Commissural fibers are just um, fibers linking the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So we have the anterior commissure, posterior commissure, but the corpus callosum is the largest of them. And around this corpus callosum recite some important sulci as well as um, gyri in the, in the sagittal view of the brain. Starting with this sulcus just immediately above the corpus callosum. That sulcus is called the callosa sulcus, okay? And it's just separating the corpus callosum from the rest of the cerebrum, okay? And above the corpus callosum is an important gyrus called the cingulate gyrus, okay? Now, you can't escape this in your steeplechase uh, exam. The cingulate gyrus resides just above, is the gyrus residing above the corpus callosum. Why the sulcus residing above the corpus callosum is what again? The callosa sulcus. Right? And above the cingulate gyrus, there is also one important sulcus again called the cingulate sulcus. Now I sense someone is confused. Don't worry, let me walk you through this gradually. Right? Take a look at this picture. This picture I prefer, though it's a textbook picture, but then it shows each of these sulcus and uh, and gyrus better okay starting with our landmark what do we call our landmark the corpus callosum okay that structure in purple now above the corpus callosum is the callosa sulcus okay let me use green for that the callosa sulcus is right here and now the gyrus above this callosa sulcus is what again let me use pink for this that's the cingulate gyrus okay the cingulate gyrus is what i just pinned right here okay 
And then above the singulate gyros is also one important circles called the singulate circle. Let me use blue for that. All right, the singulate circles is what is there. It separates the singulate gyros of the brain from other parts of the frontal lobe. Are we good? All right. Now let's move on to other structures associated with this media blue. Just for emphasis sake, do know that the limbic system resides within that singular gyrus we explained earlier. All right. Um, together with all that structures, of course, they all make up the limbic system. And now there is this other gyrus along the sagittal view of the brain I will really want to draw your attention to. And that is the gyrus rectus. Okay. All right. The gyrus rectus is somewhere along the frontal loop of the brain. It's like the inferior most part of it right here. And it can be pinned, it's commonly pinned. And when you hear the word rectus in anatomy, rectus simply stands for something straight. So the gyrus rectus is just a straight gyrus along the frontal loop of the brain. Okay, let's lay more emphasis on some other structures. Okay, let's take this quick quiz. Even to ask you what structure is pin C here. Okay, let me give you time to think. Of course, that is the central circles. The central circles is separating the frontal loop from the parietal loop of the brain. How about this structure right here? The structure pinned uh, J. Okay, should I ask you that? But before we go to J, you know, I is definitely pointing at what circles here? The central circles. And H here, do you know what H is pointing at? It is actually what is being pinned is. A gyros. I know the gyros immediately anterior to the central circles is what again? The precentral gyros. While the gyros just posterior to it is the postcentral gyros. You have to get your orientation right, of course. You will agree with me here is the frontal lobe of the brain, and definitely here is the occipital part of the brain. You can see the impression for the cerebellum somewhere right there. Okay, so once you get your orientation right, then you can deduce which is anterior and which is posterior. Okay, so now, what is J here? J is definitely the gyrus rectus we just explained earlier. This circus, right? This gyrus right here. That is the gyrus rectus. And it can be pinned to and be asked to identify what it is. Okay, uh, let's take this other question. Can you come down here? What do you think is pinned B here? Can we trace it? Of course, it is a circus that is pinned right here. What circles do you think that is? Can I get your orientation right first? Here is the cerebellum. And if this is the cerebellum, it means this will be the posterior part of the brain. Uh, maybe the anterior part of the brain is somewhere right here. Okay. So, but then a horizontal circles is being pinned here. Do you know what circles that is? Yeah, that is the calcarine circles. The calcarine circles is the horizontal part, is the is an horizontal circle separating the occipital lobe of the brain into a superior and inferior part. We already explained the um, parietal occipital circle, which is somewhere right here, which is actually separating the parietal lobe of the brain from the entire occipital lobe. But what is pinned here specifically is the calcarine circles. Are we good? All right, now let's move on to other structures. Uh, now, here is a bit blurry, but it is a circus that is being pinned. And uh, what circus do you think that is? The circus immediately above the corpus callosum is what? The callosal circus. The callosal circus. Now, these questions are, these um, quick quizzes are looking simple, but I really want you to pay rapt attention at each of them. They are important points for your steeple chase exam okay so now let's say some things about the corpus callosum we already established earlier that the corpus callosum is the uh, largest commissural fiber in the human brain there are still other commissural fibers linking the left and right hemispheres of the brain we have posterior commissural anterior commissural but the corpus callosum is the largest of them all and this corpus callosum a number of structures uh, on it can be pinned okay it has different parts as you can see in this picture, different parts of the corpus callosum has been pinned. Everything is a corpus callosum, of course. Everyone knows that. But sometimes a particular part or a specific part can be pinned and be asked to identify. Although in this picture, the callosal circles for some unknown reason has been artificially widened. But let's just ignore it for now. Our emphasis here is on the corpus callosum proper. Okay? And different structures on it have been pinned. 
can we now identify the different parts of this corpus callosum? Right here, it has been assigned number. You can see number 13, number 12, number 14, number 16. They're just different parts along the corpus callosum. This beautiful picture explains the different parts of the corpus callosum. Uh, we draw your attention to four important structures. Uh, I really want you to take note of them. Starting with the um, rostrum. Of course, get your orientation right here. It's the anterior part of the brain. And here is the posterior part of the brain. Okay. So from the front, the rostrum is like the most proximal part of this corpus callosum. Okay. And it is right there. And then we also have the genome. Whenever I hear the word genuine and atom, genuine simply means an angulation or a, 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 a turning, a, a bend, okay? So the genuine is also right there on the corpus callosum. And we have the body. The body is everything we have from year to year. Just that the body is now divided into specific parts. We have the rostral body, we have the... Um, the anterior mid body and the posterior mid body, but I prefer to just call everything the body, okay? No need to um, confuse myself on is it the mid body, is it the anterior mid body or the posterior mid body? Everything is the body. But right here on the posterior most part of the corpus callosum is the splenium, okay? And that's the fourth part of this corpus callosum I want you to take note of the rostrum, the genu, the body, and of course the splenium. Okay, let me clear all this mess and you can pause the video and go over them once again, right? So, either or any of these um, different parts can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. Okay, as you can see right here, what do you think is E here? What structure is pinned E here? Let me get red for that, okay? What part is pinned E? Okay, and of course, what part is pinned D? Yeah, E is actually the splenium of the... Uh, corpus callosum. So one is confused. How is this the splenium? Isn't it the genu? Nah, get your orientation right. That's the first thing you do in anatomy. Here is the anterior part of the brain established. And here is the posterior part of the brain established. You can see the impression for the cerebellum right there. So you will identify it. So once you've identified your anterior and posterior part, then you can walk your way around the part of the corpus callosum where being uh, specific on okay and right here e is the posterior part posterior most part of the corpus callosum that's the splenium and everything right here is the body you can see the genu right here and then the rostrum is right there okay so still another picture of the corpus callosum and that's the exact thing we're having right here which are we have the answer right here so if you're still confused, you can just take your time and go over them. There is this constriction just before the splenium that is called the ichmus. The ichmus is just like a narrowing along the body of the, of the corpus callosum. It's also right there. Okay, but if you're not sure what part of the body is we are being um, concerned with, just write the body, you're good to go. But the splenium is very defined. The rostrum, very defined. The genital, very obvious. Okay, so you wouldn't have issues in identifying those. Let's move on. Okay. Now, apart from the corpus callosum, there is also an important part I want to draw your attention to. And I ignore the part on um, paint B for now. Ignore the part paint B, although that's the septum pellucidum of the of the brain. Uh, now, a part is paint A here. Okay. This part paint A. Do you know what structure that is? Let me erase this mess. I don't know if you're familiar with that structure. That structure is the phonix. It's closely related with its limbic system as well. Uh, let me get you a better picture. Yeah. So this picture is showing the corpus callosum. And inferior to the corpus callosum is the phonix. All right. The phonix is what we're having down there. It actually continues into the um, into the temporal lobe of the brain. And this proximal part of it continues into the mammary bone. Okay, but let's just ignore those divisions for now. The structure itself is what again, the phonix. Okay, and it is associated with the limbic system as I explained earlier, together with memory, emotions, cognitions, all right? So that's that about that. So the confusing part will now be students mixing up the corpus callosum and the phonics. They are entirely two different structures, okay? The corpus callosum is a commissural fiber, while the 
four meat pieces down, it is actually located inferiorly. Okay, the corpus callosum is quite superior. So the fornix is the one that is associated with the limbic system, not the corpus callosum. Hope we're good, right? And right here, here is a summary picture over what we've been saying so far. The single gyros, which is right here. The callosal sulcus, the corpus callosum itself, the cingulate sulcus, uh, the parietal beta sulcus, the calcarine sulcus, and all. Okay, and in fact, the fornix too is right here okay and apart from this there is this cavity this large cavity i would really like to draw your attention to do you know what cavity that is sometimes a probe can be placed within that cavity can you be asked the probe here reside in what cavity now that cavity is your lateral ventricle okay but before we go there in an id brain in an id made sagittal section to the brain there is actually a membranous structure that covers that cavity called the septum pellucidum okay that septum pellucidum actually separates the two um lateral ventricles because there is a lateral ventricle in the left brain and there will definitely be another in the right brain in the right hemisphere of the brain okay yeah i think i really love this picture so right here the septum pellucidum is intact is like a transparent structure and it is separating the left and right lateral ventricles if you make the mistake of cutting through the septum pellucidum it will enter into the lateral ventricle directly okay i will get you a picture of the lateral ventricle right here the septum pellucidum has been removed and we are made the septum pellucidum something will be something like this area but once we remove it we will see the lateral ventricle residing within the um, the frontal of the cerebrum okay so quick question quick question although this is a bit blurry but do you know what structure is pinned a here where that's actually the septum pellucidum and what structure is pinned b here you know what structure that is that is your phonics that is your phonics the one we mentioned earlier okay so let's move on in this picture too, you can see the septum pellucidum is still intact, right? Now, sometimes a structure close to the lateral ventricle can be pinned. It is actually a, a piece of gray matter. That, that the structure pinned right here, there is one structure within the uh, within the lateral ventricle, a, a piece of gray matter, um, and you'll be asked to identify that structure. If it's the ventricle itself, usually it's a probe that will be placed within it. But sometimes a gray matter within it can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify that structure. That structure is actually the head of the caudate nucleus. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I think I like this picture better. Can you come down here? You can see there is a piece of gray matter being pinned. Okay, that piece of gray matter is right there. Now, the caudate nucleus is part of the uh, basal ganglia and it actually modifies movement and all. Okay. We're actually not going into the um, function of it for now. We're dwelling more on the appearance and where it is located. So I'm stating now that it actually lies deep to the lateral ventricle. Okay. Um, well, there is a beautiful picture. In case you are lost, you are lost, you are lost. Let me walk you through this. In this picture, it is a combination of a coronal session to the brain as well as an horizontal session to the brain. Okay. Such that we are made to look into the lateral ventricles. The lateral ventricles are where they appear. I can say lateral to the lateral ventricles. Let me represent the ventricles as red. Okay? Yeah. So I'm then lateral to each of these ventricles are the caudate nucleus, specifically the head of the caudate nucleus. Right? So those structures can be pinned by the eyes to identify. Usually you will see the question in this format. Can you zoom into it? Okay? If the piece of gray matter is pinned, if a piece of gray matter is pinned within the lateral ventricle most likely it is the head of the caudate nucleus okay so take note of those now let's move on to other structures around the lateral ventricle of the brain okay uh now also associated with the lateral ventricle specifically each lateral ventricle associated with them is uh, an important foramen which is draining the ventricles the lateral ventricle do you know what foramen that is Maybe from your lecture on the ventricular system of the brain, you'd have heard of the interventricular foramen, or otherwise called the foramen of Monroe. Okay, and that is the structure actually pinned B here. 
Okay, so the foramen of Romoro is, uh, or the interventricular foramen, is draining each of the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle. Okay, all right, uh, I think I like this picture better. You agree with me that the lateral ventricle is deep to this septum pellucidum, of course. Now, draining this lateral ventricle is an important foramen called this interventricular foramen. So it drains it into the third ventricle. The third ventricle is what resides right here, right? So that, that, that foramen is draining cerebral spinal fluid from the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle. Okay, and we have two of them, of course. There is a left interventricular foramen and then a right interventricular foramen. But in this picture, we are just made to see just one of them foramen. Okay, so and that brings my attention to the third ventricle. The third ventricle is somewhere within the diencephalon, residing between the two um, thalami. Okay, usually no one will really ask you to identify the uh, the third ventricle from a mid sagittal view. Usually, what will be pinned is the thalamus okay so the thalamus which is the sensory release station of the brain is right there lateral to each of the two to the is lateral to the third ventricle okay so let's move on and say other things around this third ventricle before i move on there is something i want to draw your attention to understand that there is a choroid plexus residing in the roof of this third ventricle I think there should be a better picture. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you come down here? You can see this uh, maybe a darkened structure down here. That's actually a, a, a collection of choroid plexus. Okay, the choroid plexus reside in the roof of the third ventricle, and then is form is 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 functioning for squatting out cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, it is a very vascularized structure, and as blood is flowing there, it sieves out cerebral spinal fluid. Which beats the brain. So it resides right there in the room of the third ventricle. So you can be asked to identify. In fact, it is it's a common stability question to be pinned by the heart. What is this? The choroid plexus. Okay, so that's that. About that. A very beautiful textbook picture showing some of the things we've been talking about. I want to draw your attention to the thalamus. You can see the thalamus is right here. And it actually does have. Uh, some important structures I uh, really want to hammer on. Uh, here is the thalamic attention. I don't know if you've heard of that before. The interthalamic attention is the structure. Um, it is just a band of tissue joining the two thalami. Okay. So, and then we also have the poles of the thalamus. There is an anterior pole of the thalamus, and then there is a posterior pole of the thalamus called the pulvina of the thalamus. I should have a better picture of this. Okay. Yeah. So this picture is showing the anterior pole of the thalamus right there and then the posterior pole of the thalamus is also right there. But can we do a very quick summary? We do a quick summary over some of the things we've been saying so far. I'll be pointing my arrow at certain structures and I'll want you to identify them. I won't say what they are, you'll be the one to identify them. Okay? Starting with this, do we know what structure this is? How about this? Okay. How about the structure I'm pointing an arrow to right now? Do we know what structure that is? Oh, what about this right here? I want you to identify them as I'm pointing them. How about this transparent membrane right here? Do you know what structure that is? Okay, let me point to some other structures around this. Can we identify what circles this is? In fact, if I'm to maybe uh, pin the gyros immediately above the circles, do you know what those structures are? My guy, you should really be familiar with them. If you if you don't know the answer to this, you can just skip like 10 minutes or so to the earlier part of this lecture. I demystify what these different structures are, and I want you to take good note of them. They are common um, steeple chase questions, okay? Can we answer them now? The first one right here is definitely what? This is the, um, the rostrum of the corpus callosum. This is the genome of the corpus callosum. And of course, here is the body. And then down here is the splenium of the corpus callosum, okay? And right here we have the septum pellucidum, which is separating the lateral ventricles, okay? It is a membrane structure. And did you mention what this blue structure is? 
that is the callosal sulcus, the sulcus immediately above the corpus callosum. And of course, the one in green right here is the cingulate gyrus. And as a matter of fact, above that cingulate gyrus lies one important cingulate sulcus. Okay, hope we're good. Let me clear off this mess. All right. Um, can we not say other things associated with this thalamus? Is there something we are leaving out? There is a pineal gland right here, which is not too, it is not too defined here. And here are the tectum of the midbrain. Let me get a better picture for this. Okay. Uh, can you come down here? There is still a sagittal section to the brain. Let me get your orientation right. There's a frontal part of the brain. And of course, there is a posterior part of it. You can see the cerebellum right there. Okay, and there is the corpus callosum and the phonix is down here. And do you know what structure this is? I really love this picture. That gray matter right here, I'm painting it. What structure is that? That is the caudate nucleus. Okay, it's a piece of gray matter just deep to the lateral ventricle. Okay, so I was going to mention something about the pineal gland. The pineal gland is closely associated with the thalamus. It attaches to the posterior part of the thalamus. This is the thalamus. So on the pineal gland is what we have here. It basically regulates the sleep and wake cycle. It secretes some important uh, hormone-like structure that regulates the circadian rhythm of the sleep and wake cycle. And then down to it here is the tectum of the midbrain. You know what the tectum of the midbrain is? Those bonds of structures which are associated with some reflexes. We have the superior colliculus. And the inferior colliculus, okay. So, and of course, the pleurized colliculi, of course, superior colliculi, the two bumps, and then the inferior colliculi, which is down. Inferior colliculi is located inferior. So, they are associated, the superior colliculus is associated with visual reflexes, inferior colliculus, very much associated with auditory reflexes. So, they are collectively called the tecton of the mid brain. Okay, can we move on? Um, still a beautiful picture of the pineal gland together with the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. All right. Uh, here is a textbook picture showing everything we've been discussing so far. You can see this prominent interthalamic adhesion of the thalamus. It's a band of tissue joining the two thalami. Wow, I love this. Can you see the choroid legless? Yeah, that yellow, that structure right here, that in the roof of the third ventricle, is the choroid plexus, which is functioning to squat out cerebrospinal fluid into the ventricles of the brain. All right. So um, the structure in blue here yeah, is actually the interthalamic attention. So it can be pinned. You do have to recognize it. Sometimes something as basic as the midbrain, the pons, the medulla can be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. And some other times too, it will be specific parts on these structures that will be pinned and you'll be asked to identify them. So for example, now in this sample, you can see what is pinned here is definitely midbrain. And then down here, we do have the pons and immediately inferior to it is of course the medulla. And the medulla continues downward beyond the level of the foramen magnum. It becomes the spinal cord, you do agree with me. Okay, so and some other times, these structures do some specific parts will be pinned there. For example, maybe on the midbrain, maybe the tecton could be pinned, maybe on the pons, some depressions right there, some origin for some nerves can be pinned, and you'll be asked to identify them. Don't worry, we'll discuss those in our lecture on some common stigogenes questions that can be thrown at you from the brainstem, okay? We'll show demystify those specific areas so you should you have to watch out for specificity in your steeple chase okay so you won't just end up choosing like pawns medulla for like 10 questions straight and then you start to wonder ah, I'm how far I, I don't write like 10 pawns or 15 medulla what is going on my guy everything is definitely wrong you're you are not being you're not being cautious of the questions you have to watch out for specificity you have to be very very cautious of those okay so that's that about that all right all right now let's move on to other questions that can be thrown at you from this sagittal view through the brain uh yeah let me draw your attention to the fourth ventricle the fourth ventricle is actually immediately posterior to the uh pons and immediately anterior to the uh the cerebellum okay uh the picture is not too defined here but i should have a better picture down here okay 
Can you take a look at the fourth ventricle? Fourth ventricle, we already established the lateral ventricle. It continues into the third ventricle through the foramen of Moro, otherwise called the interventricular foramen. Now, that from the third ventricle, it will continue into the fourth ventricle through a important canal called the cerebral archidot. Okay, and a probe can be placed within that foramen and you'll be asked to identify it. That's the cerebral archidot. So from the cerebral archidot, it continues into this important fourth ventricle, which is immediately posterior to the uh, to the pons and the cerebellum is forming the roof or light. Okay, take note of those. Then that um, fourth ventricle will actually continue downwards into the uh, spinal cord, okay, and in the spinal cord, the name changes to the central canal of the spinal cord, right? So that's that about that. Um, in our next video, we'll dive into some common questions that can be thrown at you from the inferior view of the brain, right? And in that session, we'll say we we'll emphasize on these uh, structures, talk about the olfactory bulb, olfactory trap, the opticals, and the so important circles and gyra around this region and of course these very important interpeduncular folks that will demystify all the structures residing there all right uh for now thank you very much for tuning in if you find the video helpful do it to hit the like button and subscribe or uh, when you subscribe you get notifications for the various videos helpful videos we've got in store for you at Achilles dream also check the description box there is a virtual steeplechase session are designed for you and once you click the link attempt the quizzes okay uh just to consolidate everything we've learned so far on this particular topic thank you